am so excited for today's video because we are doing Christmas in July. I love DIYing and decorating for Christmas, but a lot of times when I get ideas, I need to cut things, paint things, seal things, but when Christmas comes around, it is freezing here in Illinois. So I thought July would be the perfect time to share some of my favorite tips, tricks, and hacks where you can get beautiful wood decor, both easily and on a budget, so you can get ahead of the curve and get it done before that cold snap strikes, so stay tuned. If this is your first time on my channel, this is Whiskey and Wit. My name's Whitney and I love to share DIY and affordable home decor as well as Cricut tips and wood builds. So if you love all things DIY, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future content. Another super exciting thing about today's video is it is a huge collab. There are 10 of us and this is organized by my friend Shannon over at The Daily DIYer. So you guys know me, I broke out my Clark Griswold apparel, I cranked some Christmas music and let's get crafting. First up is this Nativity Luminary with a wood base and I am loving this. This turned out so much better than I even thought it was going to and it started with a Dollar Tree frame so this is just one I had in my stash as a five by seven frame and I took some scrap one by four and cut a piece about an inch longer than the glass so that I had a little bit of extra room on each side then I also took a half inch dowel rod as well as a quarter inch dowel rod and cut it down to the same length I got these at Menards but you can get them at Walmart after a quick sanding, I took some Gorilla Glue wood glue and took the half inch square dowel rod and hooked it flush with the bottom of the one by four. So basically you're creating like a little step down and you'll see why we did that in a minute. So once the wood glue was on there, I clamped it, let it dry and then grabbed some Briar Smoke wood stain and stained it. I also made sure to stain my quarter inch square dowel rod and I waited to put it on till after I stained because I didn't want to try to get stain in those little holes. So I added some wood glue and I made sure that it was enough space for my glass to slide in and then I clamped it again. To give it that luminary feel, I took some frosted glass spray paint and sprayed one side of the framed glass and here is what it looks like when it's all done. The last step was to create that Holy Family silhouette. So I cut that out with a file that I bought from Etsy and then I also added an additional box at the bottom so that the black ground was a little bit thicker. I will link that down below. And then I just applied it with some regular old transfer tape and I went with the black matte vinyl and I think that made a huge difference, especially with the glow coming from the back. You don't want the front to be too shiny. So with that back ledge, you can put whatever you want on there, flameless candles or like I did here, a real candle. The glow is awesome. And I also love lit garlands for Christmas time. And so it works with both the candle as well as a lit garland. Another super exciting thing about today's video is it is a huge collab. There are 10 of us and this is organized by my friend Shannon over at The Daily DIYer and The Cozy Christmas Cottage. She has two channels. That girl is so busy and I love The Cozy Christmas Cottage because it's specific to Christmas. She starts in July and creates throughout the rest of the year. So be sure to check out both of those channels as well as the full playlist down below so you can see her stuff and then all of the other ladies participating in this collab. I cannot wait to go watch those videos. Now, if you've been around a while, you know I'm obsessed with these pennant signs from Dollar Tree and I had some ideas for them, of course, for Christmas as well. So here are the original signs and these you can still find at stores near me, but you could also do the same concept over a tag. They've got some summer tags out right now, so really just any Dollar Tree sign. And then I grabbed some wood paint sticks from Home Depot. I measured so that I could cut them down so they would fit the width of the sign. Now here's a quick trick. You can definitely cut them down with a miter box and saw if you don't have a chop saw I would recommend that but if you do have a chop saw you can take some painters tape make sure that they're all flush put them together and then cut them with the tape on either side everything stays in place and then you can make one to two cuts instead of a ton again I've made these with a miter box for those cuts so if you don't have a chop saw no worries but if you do that will save you some time. Then I took some hot glue, glued my sticks down with no space in between, and then I just trimmed off those little corners at the bottom because they weren't needed. Then for another time saver, I just grabbed some flat white spray paint and spray painted both signs instead of painting them because they dry quicker and it's easier for me to spray paint them faster. 
Then the last step was to customize with my Cricut. And so I created two different signs. Both of them are files I designed, which will be linked over on my blog if you wanna get into the holiday spirit as well. But I just went through, trimmed out the first one, and this one is actually gonna be an SVG file compared to my normal one color PNGs. So this, if you put it into Cricut Design Space, it will allow you to cut in three colors, the green, the red, and the blacks. So you can create these kind of holly, berry, greenery garlands to put in the center of your sign, which is super fun. So I'm getting high tech over here. I really like that it says holiday greens. I've got so many things that say Christmas tree farm, which I think is adorable, but this is a nice kind of different take on it. Then for the other one, I went much more simple. I did one color red, have yourself a merry little Christmas. And then to spice up the top, I just use a couple pieces of some cedar wreath greenery that I got on clearance last year. I arranged them, wrapped the center with some jute twine to give it kind of that earthy look. And then to finish it off, I wanted to add some pops of red. So I just took this Dollar Tree garland from last year, popped off the berries and stuck them on. I only did three on each side. It was just enough to give it the red that I was looking for. And both of these are awesome over our coffee bar, which is where all of these signs live. I have been on the hunt for a nativity scene for a while. I was able to get a willow tree set secondhand so I didn't have to pay the crazy prices for the ones that are brand new. And so I wanted to create an area where I could display it in our home and create either a barn or something. I've seen a few different variations on Pinterest I wanted to try. So I grabbed a scrap piece of wood. This is about 12 inches in width and some one by two furring strips. So these you can get at Home Depot right now for like 250, I think it's 228. And so you won't be super sticker shocked when you get there like most lumber is right now. So I cut four pieces at 10 inches for the sides of my barn. And then I kind of approximated what I was gonna need as far as length for the two roofs. So I decided to go with 12 inches and then I also added some miter cuts to get a peak. Now I would not recommend this, this added way too much of a headache, so I would just leave them as is. I would just leave them as is and do a 90 degree angle instead of trying to mire the corners I got too fancy and it ended up coming back to bite me. So you've got four posts, a base, and then four pieces for your roof. Go through and sand them. And then I also approximated how many pieces of painter sticks I was gonna need because I put them on as essentially like roof shingles like this. I went through and stained it in Briar Smoke by Verithane, all the different pieces, including the roof. That just matches our house currently. And then it was time to assemble. So here is the headache where I was trying to glue things together. It would have been a lot easier if it was just a 90 degree angle. I would suggest doing a 90 degree angle and then using a nail gun to hook them together. I ended up using a nail gun, but I would not recommend it. So I'm not gonna show you how I did it here. So just please do not do that. But then it was a lot easier to use my nail gun to hook the two peaks to two of the 10 inch pieces. So essentially you're creating two house looking shapes. And then I figured out where I wanted them to sit, marked it and drilled pilot holes so that I could screw them in for a little bit more of stability. You could definitely use a nail gun through the bottom, but I couldn't like get it in the right spot and it like for safety reasons was freaking me out. So pilot holes and screws was what I went with. Then the last step was just to take a glue gun, take my stained little pieces and put them across the top. I didn't want them to look uniform. I wanted it to look a little rickety because that's the whole point. So I love how this turned out. Honestly, my faux pas with the glue at the top with the two different level like peaks, I honestly really like. It gives it some character. It's a really easy way to create a statement piece for your nativity set because I just had a hard time figuring out where to put it and I'm excited for this season for this to be the focal point of my decor. Let's keep trucking along with some ideas for scrap wood. So here is a book stack that I made for my tiered tray. And I made this using scrap one by four pieces that I cut down to five inches in length. 
And if you don't have scrap wood, you could also use, there's games at the Dollar Tree that are wood that you could cut down or just use as is, the little like golf game. You can also check out your hardware store and see if they have an as is section. My Menards does, and I find a lot of great pieces there for super cheap. It's stuff that people have cut and they don't want. And so it makes it a lot easier to get wood for much cheaper. Once all my pieces were cut, I went inside and I painted two of them red with acrylic paint and then one white to make it look more like a candy cane. Then I used the font American Typewriter in Cricut Design Space. I just typed out the text that I wanted. And because my blocks actually ended up being about four and a half inches, I went with four inches in width for my text. And once they were all done, I just hooked them together with some Dollar Tree jute twine, gave it a little tie at the top, and these are gonna be adorable on my tiered trays or a cocoa bar. This is what I love about making my own decor. I'm not sure you could find this in the store, so I love it. Another variation of those blocks is something like this, so Mary blocks. So I went through and just cut some two by fours so they were a little bit thicker, but in the same thought process as those books. But instead of hooking these together, they'll be freestanding blocks. I sanded them down and stained them in dark walnut by Minwax, and then I just used that same font, American Typewriter, and got Mary cut out. You could also use stickers from Dollar Tree if you don't have a Cricut, or you can also get stencils at places like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, or you could take a Sharpie paint pen and just write the letters yourself. But I have a funky shelf on our little shelving unit in our front room, and I never know what to put there for the holidays, so I love that this is just low enough profile that it gives me the ability to decorate that area without having to try too hard. So when it comes to farmhouse decor for Christmas, wood signs are a huge part of that motif, but here's a hack to get it really easily. So these are wood panels from Arteza. I've used them before and I absolutely love them. You don't have to worry about framing or anything. You can just go through and stain them. And then instead of having to paint, go through with some matte white vinyl and it's gonna look like you painted it, but it's gonna be so much quicker. So this vinyl is from Expressions Vinyl and I just applied it like I would any other decal. And because it's not shiny like traditional vinyl, it looks like you painted it or hand lettered it when really all you did was stick on a decal, which I absolutely love. The back panel is the same thing. I just painted it white and then actually added a stencil so the back one is painted. I will link the free SVG I found over at Kaluuya Designs if you'd like to make your own. Now what if you do have some wood and you want to make some signs? No problem. Here is a version with a Cricut as well as without. So if you don't have a Cricut, here's how you can do it. So I started with some more scrap wood and I measured the short side of my square. So whatever size sign you are making, just go ahead and measure the short side. Then I took some one by two furring strips. Again, these are the cheap ones that you can find at the hardware store. And I cut two pieces so that they are flush with my two short ends. Then I laid down both of those pieces and I measured end to end so that I could cut a piece of trim for the top and the bottom that would both cover the sign as well as overlap those two pieces I cut originally. So here's the look that we are going for. Once I had those cut, I just took my orbital sander and sanded them down, but you could definitely do this with a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper. I just had this out. And then I stained all of the edges of the frame as well as the back of the sign in the same color, just so then if you're setting it on a shelf where you can see the back, it looks finished. After a quick coat of black chalk paint, then I was ready to apply my decal. Again, I'm using that matte white vinyl from Expressions Vinyl, and this file will be linked down below for you as well. I saw a variation of this saying on Kirkland's for this year, and I made some edits and cut it out myself. 
Now, for those of you that don't have a Cricut, don't think that farmhouse signs are unattainable. What you can do is either get some transfer paper like I have here, or just color on the back of a printed out item with a pencil first, then go through and trace it, and that gives you some guidelines. So then I took an Arteza, just acrylic paint marker, but you can use Sharpie. If you have a white background, you could use an actual Sharpie. And I just went through and traced it. I really like the hand-drawn look of this and it was pretty easy to put together without a decal. So then to assemble the sign, you can either take your frame and flush it with the front of the sign or make it flushed with the back of the sign. So what I mean by that is here, I'm flushing the frame with the front of the sign so everything is flush on the front and it gives you one look. And then you can also do it where the sign is recessed into the frame. So here's the first one where it is flush with the front. And then with the other sign, I did it where it was flushed with the back. So it's all personal preference. I have a mixture of different types in my house, but here is what the flushed sign looks like. This is with the matte vinyl. And I absolutely love this, especially with that plaid sign as well. I might have to make more of those. They stage really well with that. And also here is the one with the frame flushed to the front. So these signs are pretty easy and inexpensive to make. If you don't have a saw, you can use your miter box to cut it. You can also use some finishing nails and a hammer to get your border to attach instead of needing a nail gun. I have a full video on how to create farmhouse signs and some of my best tips and tricks. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check that out. Here is a, another project that looks like you spent a ton of time and money on it, but let me show you how easy it is to put together. I plan to use it to display some wreaths like this this winter, but I've got a couple different ways you can use it. So let's get building. Again, this started with some scrap wood. We've got a lot of scrap from projects we've done, but you can get a one by six piece of lumber for relatively inexpensive. I went through and created two and a half inch strips on either side, and I'm gonna go through with a jigsaw and cut out my rails for my sled. Once I measured my two and a half inch strips, I just used a can of poly to create the curved edge that you would see on a vintage sled. So here, kind of the front scoop up. Then I went through with my jigsaw and I cut the straight edge as well as the curve out of that piece. Once that one was done, I measured it alongside the other piece that I hadn't cut yet so they were identical and then I cut my second piece. I don't get too hung up if the cut isn't perfect. I mean, you don't wanna go like crazy willy nilly but you can fix a lot of it with sanding. So the next step was to create the actual body of the sled and to do this really inexpensively, I used dog-eared fence pickets and these were $1.86 at Menards and you get a ton of wood and you didn't need anything too thick. So I went through and decided that I needed two cut from 30 inches from the top and then two cut at 32 inches from the top. That will give you two pieces that kind of raise up in the center and then I started to see my sled take shape. And I measured across the back so that I knew how big my brace needed to be. I ended up going with 10 inches, and this is just a one by three, but you could honestly use any piece of wood that you have. You could even use a one by two strip, just really whatever you have to help brace the back. So once my back pieces were cut, I had a couple more steps before I could stain. So I took the largest drill bit that we had at our house and drilled two holes in the area where I wanted my rope to go. And then I made sure to give everything a really good sand, especially those edges. And then I stained everything that briar smoke color. Once the stain dried, I assembled the bed or the main part of my sled. So I put the sides that I wanted to be on the outside facing down on the table and then I use my nail gun to attach it. If you don't have a nail gun, you could use screws from the front or from the back as well. Just make sure you measure them before you stick them through, just so then that way they don't come out the front. I wanted to soften it a little bit, so I just dry brushed on some white chalk paint and that gave it kind of a winter snow vibe. And then it was time to add my sled rails. So I lined up everything with the edge of each piece. So the edge of the top was lined up with the outside edge of the rail on either side. And then I went along each side and used my nail gun to hook everything down. Again, if you don't have a nail gun, you could absolutely use screws there too. Then the last step was to add some thick rope. I got this from Menards. 
I just popped it through each of the holes and tied a knot on the inside and it was ready to go. So here is the sled once completed. I absolutely love it. I also love that it is neutral and I can use this well into the winter so it doesn't have to come down with Christmas decor, but you could absolutely paint this white and red or you could do a really cute buffalo check pattern. I plan to use it with a wreath just like shown here. All I did to do that was put some ribbon through the wreath and then I used a staple gun to hook it to that back brace. Another idea that it would be cute for is to display your Christmas cards. All you have to do is take a staple gun, pop some staples on top of some jute twine to hook it on the back. I wrapped it around a few times, pop on some cute little clips, and you've got a really easy and fun display for your Christmas cards. And then you can pop them off when it's time for winter and you've got your sled again. Now last Christmas I got a jigsaw and if you've been watching my videos you've seen that I have done a ton of different wood cutting projects. I feel like I've gotten a lot better with it and I really wanted to do some different shaped signs for tiered trays and different displays. So again I grabbed some scrap wood and the key here with the jigsaw is that I would recommend a one by something. So one by three, one by six, one by eight, a two by something is really hard to cut and get the shapes that you want. So look for a thin board. I cut out a few different sizes of light bulbs and then also used some painters tape to create a circle for the different signs. Then I got to cutting. I clamped my piece of wood to the table and then I started cutting as best I could. You can't get a really great edge. I was surprised at how good of a kind of semicircle this gave me, but you may have to cut in a variety of different angles just to get everything kind of cut. But really for me, this is like weeding. It's been kind of cathartic for me to do it. Again, with the jigsaw, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because once you go through with an orbital sander, I would recommend doing a power sander with this. I'm able to really sculpt the edges and get everything nice and smooth. Then this is optional, but I decided to do a base coat of dark walnut stain. I like it when it shines through the acrylic paint when I go to paint everything. So once that's dry, then I paint the bulbs, the colors. I did red, blue, green, and yellow. And then once those dried, I went back through with some gray Waverly chalk paint to make the ends look like the actual part of the bulb that is gray. I added a couple just faint lines to the end so it looked kind of like the spirals where you twist the light into the socket and I am loving the different sizes. I'm going to use the big ones on our shelf where we do a Christmas tree farm display and then those small ones are going to go great on my Christmas vacation themed tray. That's also where the right side little semicircle is going as well. I love Christmas vacation. I have done Christmas vacation themed DIYs for the past couple years so I will link that down below for you if you are also a Griswold fan. I wanted to incorporate some more wood tones into my mantle this year so I thought this would be a great time to do so. I grabbed some more scrap wood. I sound like a broken record but it was nice to be able to use a lot of wood that I had on hand and I measured a couple pieces and cut 45 degree angles. You're going to want to make sure that you have large enough pieces where you can keep your fingers back far enough. If you have smaller pieces, I would recommend using a miter box. If you're using a one by piece of wood, you could easily cut it with a miter box. I wouldn't try a two by four, but a one by I've cut before and you'll be able to do that that way. After a quick sand, I added some wood glue to the top of the largest piece and then clamped it so that it hooked together. I gave that about 15 minutes to dry and then I repeated the step with the top one. And what I like about these DeWalt clamps is that there is a little section for the points. So you don't have to worry about it getting squished. Same thing, left it for about 15 minutes and then finished with the Briar Smoke stain. After I stained it, I decided I wanted a base. So I just took the same one by four and cut a piece to the width of the bottom of the tree. I wanted it as a stabilizer, but then I also realized you could flip it around. It could act as a cute little shelf, or you could easily add some hanging hardware, and these would be really cute stocking holders that were very affordable and easy to make. And we've made it to project 10. Be sure to put a Christmas emoji down in the comments if you are still with me. This last project is kind of a fail, but also something that I wanted to do for Finn so that we had something sentimental for Christmas Eve. 
I wanted to make a wood tray that we could get out every year to leave out cookies and milk for Santa. So it started with this 18 inch round edge glued pine panel that I got at Menards, but you can get these at any hardware store. And these are pretty affordable. You can get this for under 15 bucks. After I stained the whole thing with Briar Smoke by Verathane, I went through and gave it a light coat of Mod Podge just to seal in the stain before I applied a stencil. Now you're probably thinking an 18 inch round, you can't cut that in one piece on your Cricut, which is true, but here is how you can create that stencil. Get your file in there and size it to the size that you want. Then also get a shape that matches what you're trying to cut. So here I have an 18 inch wide circle. I resize my design, put it on top of the circle, and then you're gonna select both items and hit slice. That's gonna give you three pieces and you can get rid of the two so that you're left with this circle stencil. Once you do that, then you're gonna to wanna to think about what size mat you're gonna cut on. So I'm cutting on a 12 by 24, so I know the biggest width I can cut on that is 11 and a half inches. So I made a box 11 and a half inches by 19 because that's just bigger than my circle. I selected both files and then I hit slice again. Once you slice, it's gonna create three different pieces, so you just go through and get rid of the pieces you don't want, but then you're gonna follow through the process and cut everything out, but that's how you can slice down and get a stencil that's a lot larger than your mat. Then I had to go through and weed everything, which was tedious and also additionally frustrating because this project didn't work out the way I wanted it to, but I did wanna share it because I don't want you to get frustrated if you have fails because literally everyone has fails. Everyone on YouTube has fails, so just know that. But once I cut it out, I used some paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. I've talked about it all the time. This is my favorite for working with wood. I applied the stencil and the fact that you have that circle measured to 18 inches will help you get everything aligned just perfectly. Then on a paper plate, I put some just regular old white acrylic paint and I used a foam brush in a dabbing motion to get everything painted down. Here's what it looks like once you have put two coats on everything and then I peeled it off and removed with my little weeding tool any of the extra little pieces. I was super bummed because there was a lot of bleeding, but we're gonna make it work. I grabbed these really cool cabinet poles from Menards and added them to the circle to make it into a tray. So I put them where I wanted, marked where I needed my holes, and then used the right size drill bit, depending on how big your screw is, and made two holes so that I could hook them on either side. It was a little easier with this one because the words were in such straight lines that I could tell, okay, I need a hole on the right side of the line and the left side of the line. Then just pop your screw through the back, screw everything in. I like to get it tight with a screwdriver. And then the last step is to seal with a polyurethane. I like to do at least two coats and that will keep it water resistant. And if it's water-based, you can also put food on it. So as you can see here, there are some fun little <laughs> blips there, some bleeding, and my perfectionism is just driving me nuts. But big picture, it looks nice. We're gonna be able to use it, and I'm excited for this to be a part of Christmas traditions for years to come. Hopefully this helps you get a jump start on your Christmas projects from both myself as well as all the other ladies in the collab. A huge thank you to Shannon for including me. I've been a fan of hers for years, even before I had a channel. So now to be collabing with her on videos just blows my mind. So be sure to check out her two channels. Those will be linked down in the comments as well as the full playlist. You can see all of the merry and bright goodness. Also, if this is your first time here and you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any future whiskey and what content. And I'll also link my full Christmas playlist down below if you are just in a Christmas mood and you want more content. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.